Um, again, you know my name, Kathy Boone. Um, this is Devin, and he's my eight-year-old German Shepherd. That uh, he is my third dog that I've started. Um, unfortunately, my first two have passed away. Um, and he's from Wyoming. I actually flew out and got him. A friend of mine breeds German Shepherds out there, uh, primarily for search and rescue and um, police, police work. But a lot of this, <laughs> yeah, he loves this toy. Um, a lot of, and I, he's very strong. <laughs> sit, sit, sit. Devin, sit. Flats, flats. And so, I got my pick of the litter and I picked him. I actually have another dog, a little female, that I'm starting. I am the lead trainer. Uh, we, when I lived in Montana, we were Central Montana Search Dogs. Um, here we've kind of shortened it up and it's CMSD, Eastern Region Unit. Just rather keep kind of the name going because we have people in other states also from our group. So here, you can have that. Um, so that's what we do. I have, um, a couple other people on my team, a little a guy that has a little border collie. So any breed, any working breed, especially the breeds that are in um, the working groups or the herding groups, usually make good search dogs. And not all of those breeds, but you know the bigger dogs, especially out in Montana, they got to be pretty rugged dogs. They really need a, a double coat um, because to keep warm and even here, you know, it's been lovely winter. So to keep them warm, they, you know, to use a Doberman that doesn't have any hair, it's tough for them out there. They obviously would have to wear uh, some kind of, um, overcoat. So, um, the double coated dogs are, out. I love German Shepherds. I grew up, we grew up raising collies and then we switched to German Shepherds, but we didn't raise them. We just had them as pets. And it was something I always wanted to do. Um, and I traveled with a job for a lot of years and I couldn't even have a dog, couldn't have a pet. I did have a goldfish, but that didn't work out always so well. Um, so when I had the chance and the opportunity, um, I literally quit a very good job in Montana or in Atlanta and moved to Montana. And that's how it all got started. But um, I love doing it. I love what the dogs can do. Dogs, these dogs are super, super smart. And again, not every German Shepherd that you get is going to be able to do search and rescue. I can't do brain surgery, so I don't expect my dog to do something that would be crazy. But he's pretty capable of doing any, anything. And uh, my last, my first dog, he was actually capable of tracking a car. And I have tried it with him, and he actually, well, because I didn't know where we train all the time, and he didn't do exactly what I told him to do, so I knew he drove away in his car. So even though I didn't know, I let the dog figure it out, and he actually did track the car. And then when he got out of the car, then he tracked him from the car to where he was hiding. So they're really amazing what they can do, and I really give my dogs a lot of credit and let them do, and it's a thinking thing, and I think it's great for dogs if they have the opportunity to think. Um, they are capable of reasoning and figuring things out, and I've watched that, especially with him and growing and learning things, and I could see light bulbs going off in his head. I can read body lang dog body language. I'm also a trainer, um, so I, I, I know. I mean, pretty much can tell what the dog is doing, especially my own dogs, and pretty good on everybody else's dogs, too, that I do training. It takes about, for new people, I would say, and depending on the dog, almost three years to get your dog trained. Because, one, we all have jobs, most of us, and we train on the weekends when it's, you know, this has been a horrible winter, so. We try to train like every Sunday, and we change it up. We'll go out into like a wilderness wooded area, like Menden Ponds Park is a great place because it's not overly congested no matter when you're there. And then we work around, I work at Linden Oaks, so we train a lot there because you've got the buildings, you've got actually some wooded areas, you've got a variety of surfaces. He's extremely good tracking over pavement. I mean, we did all pavement the other day because he had a foot issue, and I didn't want him getting in the icy snow that, you know, basically can cut there. I don't know why. He has sensitive feet. And so I said, just lay the track completely on hard surface, and there was no issue. Um, but it's, again, what you believe your dog, and train for things. We try to train for every scenario, and of course, 
when I get called out, it'll be a totally different scenario. But I trust my dog, and I feel very confident in my dog. And I never, I'll, I'll take some questions in a second. Um, I feel very confident that when I get my dog out, I know 100% of the time that dog's going to go to work because they know why they're doing this. Right, Dev? Um, yeah, he, 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 I saw that happen. I mean, he wasn't an overly friendly dog to people when he was young, when he was one, two. It was all about me and pleasing me, and it's still that way. But I saw towards when he was getting close to about three, I saw a change in him, and he absolutely could, I mean, he had to get to that person that was hiding for us. And we'll do 24-hour tracks, we'll do 48-hour tracks where somebody, today will lay the track and I'll come out Saturday and run my dog. Around here we have humidity, especially in the summer, so we have a lot of green. So that really holds scent in. I love working with buildings and stuff because that scent stays right in there. When you go out to Montana and it's desert practically out there because it's so dry, um, we were literally, it was dry, dry. I mean, that's why we have so many fires and things out there because of the dry, um, the dry air and the dry, you know, the grass is all dried up. And by, by probably June, if, it's, if they're not irrigating, you know, things are pretty, pretty uh, like dirt and sand. So here, it's, it's really <laughs> pretty easy to track. Um, so, like I said, you know, it's a two to three year training. I like to put my dogs really through everything before I'll cert certify them. And could I train a dog probably and get them done in two years? Well, one, a dog, shepherd, bigger breeds, I don't feel have fully grown physically or mentally till they're three years old. So to put a dog out is like having a, having a kindergarten doing what a sixth grader would do. They can't do that, and neither can the dogs. So I feel giving them some time. I also feel that it's an integrity thing, and I want to make sure that when I do put my dog out there, that he's capable of tackling whatever I ask him to do. So I'm really, really, it's not like, oh, quick, hurry up and get the dogs out there. I, I want to have a search dog. I could care less. I, when my dog, I feel, is ready, I'll test him. And we test to standards, uh, FEMA standards. They're a little bit above FEMA standards, where the dog has to search for somebody that the, the track is 12 to 20 hours old, and it's at least a mile to a mile and a half. And it's unknown to me. And I know the dog, obviously. But when we normally train, we mark our tracks. So whoever is the track layer, they've laid flags or chalk marks on pavement or something because I want to make sure, even though my dog's fully trained, I want to make sure he continues being very good and staying, you know, basically somewhat true to the track, depending on wind conditions and things. So that's why I'm a little check there. Um, really particular in making sure my dogs know what they're doing. So I'm very conservative. I'm very conservative in training, in training my own dogs just to be good dogs. I'm conservative, but by the time they hit three, if I've started with a puppy or not, it depends on what I get. I mean, I'll, I've bought dogs off of people that had no business having the dog just because it was it was driving me crazy. Here was a dog that, in fact, my little female is in that same situation. I bought her off a guy that had no business having her. And she was going to be, she was going to bite. I mean, there was no question. She was so fearful she was going to bite. And I wish I could have bought, brought her today, um, but I just didn't have hands enough to try to keep track of two dogs. But she is phenomenal, extremely smart. She's over the fearfulness. She, she, what, Kill, what doesn't kill her makes her stronger. So she's really headed in a good direction. She and to. oh yeah, and by yeah, yeah. I would the wrong like, probably every one of you here in this in this room could come in my house and not worry about getting bit. But I can assure you that the wrong person cannot, because that's happened. They didn't exactly check the area. <laughs> <laughs> before I had come, trying to come in my house and I don't shut my door because it's like, why would I shut my door? Because, <laughs> what are you doing? Um, because I got three German Shepherds here. So actually four when that happened. So, um, yeah, they do everything. And that's what I like about German Shepherds over, say, another breed, you know, say a Golden. And, and I think if I didn't have German Shepherds, I might have a Golden for a pet. But 
I love these guys, and I feel very safe and com you know uh, comforted that they're in my house, and, and they sleep with me, and they're in the house, and you know, so they do they do everything. But um, so anyway, that's that's kind of a synopsis of what we do, and as far as training. Um, any questions about anything? I will do probably try to do a little demonstration. What, what have you been tracking this year? Criminals or I don't do people? I don't really do bad guys unless they think they're dead. <laughs> because and I've done numerous, especially in Montana, I did a lot of criminal type things. Um, here, not so much. It's usually I've done drownings. I lost I just lost my um, dog that was cadaver and oh, yeah. could work um, the boat or work on land, um, kind of an unexpected thing. So I didn't, you know, so I don't have a cadaver dog at the moment. He doesn't like doing it. I mean, he'll do it. I don't, I feel, you know, if he's up for that, that's fine, let's go, you know, but he's like, oh, this isn't really, I really like finding live people. What's Devin been tricking? Just people, people, kids, Alzheimer's type patients, um, that type of thing, yeah. People that walk away from their house, um, you know, he's kids, he's super great with kids. I don't worry about him, you know, I, he's never tried, I mean, he's eight years old and he's never tried to bite another person. He got bit a few times, unfortunately, by a couple other dogs and he is not, this is his space, other dogs need to stay out of it. When he's working, I just stop, ask whoever to please move on, you know, get out of our way and he'll go on. I mean, he won't attack another dog, but he won't um, be thrilled that they're in, you know. It must be like a game and a <laughs> challenge to the dog. It is. It is. I mean, it, it, to them, it is somewhat of a game. And like I said, I think he, uh, you know, he changed when he was almost three, where he really knew what he was doing and why he was doing it. Because his, it was a total different body change. He would go find the person, yeah, right, come and get me. And then, you know, take me to the person that's miss, you know, that we were training or whoever we're looking for. But now it's, it, you can just, he just needs to get there and he needs to get to the end. And it doesn't matter how far, you know, we can go more than a mile. Um, I've, with my other dog in Montana, I mean, we'd search all day, six hours. And he, that dog never stopped. I'd have to stop him. It's like, okay, we need to take just a little break. You know, when you're up 10, 8,000 feet or so, you know, the air's thin. It never bothered me, never had a problem. The dog didn't have a problem with altitude, so there was no problem. But they have to learn to get on helicopters and fly in helicopters and things like that. So there's just so much to learn in that two years. Plus, I train the other people in my, um, in my group and and I pretty much will say, you know, okay, we're ready to test this dog. And our little Border Collie is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best tracking dogs, literally, uh, besides a Border Collie, because I grew up with the Border Collies out in Montana. And I honestly say, she's blow them all away. She's just amazing. She doesn't go off track. She throws a little negative, which means she's gone off track by a few feet, and she stops and comes right back. And I mean, I, we tried to fool her big time last Saturday and did circles around trees and up and did loops. And I'm like, go and do this. And I split off from the guy, because I have a new guy that's training with us, and split off to see if she would follow my track. No, she just couldn't fool her at all. She's smart. And he does agility with her, too. So they're, they're multitasking, you know, when you start doing stuff. Yes? Is there a certain age where they stop learning? <sighs> no. I don't think so. Um, I train dogs. I, I used to show dogs, and I'm starting with my little female to do that with her also. And I trained with a lady that had a 10-year-old little schnauzer that we used to go do and show, do show obedience. You know, so no, I think, you know, and granted, some dog, you know, as they get really old, dogs can get Alzheimer's and get memory issues, and they have things that fail physically. <coughs> Excuse me, but normally no. I mean they. So that old cliche. It it, it is so not true. It is absolutely not true. Could you take us through uh, how you train a dog from beginning to uh... to finished basically? Um, I start I start with like a puppy track, or um, we call them training uh, tracking squares, and we literally take walk a square put like four 
um, flags. As we hit the corner and we turn, we put a flag, and the, the squares are about six by six. We put a treat under each foot, put the dog on it, and we actually walk inside the square and then jump out on the far end, not the end that we came, that we started. I know it sounds a little crazy, um, but it teaches them to you know, look for treats and smell at the same time. They're putting these things together and making turns. If they go out of bounds and out of that boundary, it's fine. They'll go out and they realize, oh, no treats. But I think, it, and, and I use, try to use pretty decent treats, like some type of soft treat, hot dogs, you know, chicken, whatever I got left over or whatever. And they'll come back in and then they go back to work. And they'll continue and they'll, they'll if you've got a really good dog, that's a really easy way of telling you that this dog's really into doing this. Are these people's sense that you're tracking when you say they're following a the track? There's people walking all over the place. How does the dog Doesn't matter. one to track? I give them... Have you seen the movies, the 11 Sniff Assure or something? Absolutely. Um, I'll, I mean, I've done where people, there's been a car accident, cars rolled over, gone down a hill. And we've gone in and the guy's obviously missing. And actually I went one time and the car was gone too. And I'm like, well, we don't know. I mean, I got to have a little something because now there had been several people. So uh, one of the guys who worked with us and trained with us was a cop out in Montana. He went to the car that they had towed away and took the scent article, got a scent article, wiped the steering wheel and the seat and came back with it. As long as he was with me, when I started the dog, the dog knows, well, this guy's here. I smell his scent on this scent article, but there's another scent also on this. I've actually had taken a scent article with five people touching it. And that one person that wasn't there, he knew. On a, on a candy wrapper. Wow. Yes. Actually burned a, burned a scent article twice. Burned it once burned it up a second time, put it in a plastic bag, showed it to the dog, and off it went. I took another time and just took a paper towel or some type of, I think it was just like a little two-by-two two gauze, just waved it in front of the person, put it in the bag, that was a scent article. So it doesn't take much. But they're, you know, they're so keen to this. Would I do it with a brand new dog? No. I did it with him, he was about 18 months, and everybody was, oh, he needs to be tested. I'm like, oh, he's so far not ready. To me, he's not ready. Yeah, he's doing a great job here at the seminar, but mm -mm, he's not ready to go out and look yeah, for it. the phrase laying a track. Does that mean just going for a walk? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you also said something about putting markers. Up. Yeah, we have, like, I, you know, you get that little flagging, put them on some clothespins, or the little stick flags that you see that, you know, like our g &E uses or something and sticks them in the ground. Just depends on, you know, if you're no place to stick the flags, the sticky ones. I personally like my flags up high. I've had him, I mean, I've had flags this high and my, both of the, my dogs would stand up on their hind feet because they could smell that scent article hanging from 10 feet above them. So it's amazing how they, you know, they really tone in on that scent. Kathy, how do you get your assignments? Who's giving you the assignments? Um, we work with the Monroe County Sheriff's quite often. Um, I've had like other counties call the sheriffs, and they'll give them our name, and then I will call and you know ask. Um, we did a thing down at um, Cuca Lake where a guy had drowned the day before, fell off the back of a boat, and. Um, I couldn't find, I mean, the, I didn't realize that lake's pretty deep for the size of it and the width of it. And he ended up being down 120 feet. We went down the next day. I took two dogs because my two dogs that I lost um, were both trained to do boat and cadaver. And I got my first, my shepherd I took out and he pretty much alerted. In fact, he finally was like, how many times are we going to do over this place? Because and it was pretty windy, so I said, we're going to be off just a little bit because the scent cone, when, the, when there's a wind, there's a scent cone. And when you're closer to the subject, you know, that's where you're going to be more accurate. And then as you go out here, the scent just comes out like a fan. So we tried to hone in by doing like serpentines in the water where, and try to pinpoint and GPS mark it. So we, you know, I'd hit the GPS when the dog started to alert, and then we'd go off, and the dog didn't care. We'd come back, and we had a pretty much idea of where he went in, 
but he was off quite a bit from where they thought. And yeah, he probably he may have drifted a little bit when he fell off, but he must have been, you know, unconscious um, when he, you know, hit the back when he hit his head probably, and and he was and he was also he, they had also been drinking um, quite a bit. So and it was like I think six or seven o'clock at night um, that it happened, and we were there the next day by I think three or so, and. Um, both my dogs alerted. I'm like, well, let's get the other dog out since she's here and just see what she does. And she alerted in the same areas. So the sheriff called me the next day and said, thanks so much. We put our divers in. He was 120 feet down in 34 degree water. So, yeah. Yeah, we had found quite a few drowning victims. And the dogs are on the boat? Yeah. Uh huh. So they can, I, I like a boat that, you know, at least they can, you know, there's a side to it because I don't want them falling off. And they just kind of, you know, they just, they'll walk, they'll, you know, have some space to walk on the boat. They can do whatever they want. They're free to do whatever they need to do. And they wear their little life jackets and everything. <laughs> yes? What's the average amount of time it usually takes a search dog to find who they're looking for? We had a good idea. We had, they had put buoys out. So we had some kind of an area, which is not usually the case of a drowning. You know, they know they're in the lake somewhere. Well, that doesn't really, you know. So you're going to look a long time before you might find somebody. I've done uh, swift water also, where they've fallen in the water. And I, you know, I told guys, I'm like, I'm pretty sure the guy's in here. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. We, you know, we've checked there, we've checked there, we've checked there. And I'm like, pretty sure, pretty sure. And I'm like, I'll check the other areas, but, you know, we came back and the dog, I mean, I couldn't keep the dog out of the water. And this was in Montana on the Bighorn, and we had FBI there because um, Cheney was there fishing. And so that was disrupting. We had boat motors and all sorts of things, you know, the smell and everything. But um, sure enough, they came, I said, really, just put your poles in there and see. And they actually brought, they had jet boats because the water would get pretty shallow in places. So they got jet boats and they just revved the engines and it dislodged the guy. And you could pretty much tell, they knew where he went in because there was cops after this guy. And he was also very drunk. And he just hit a hole in the river and, and it was pretty cold. The water was, I don't know, about 50 degrees. So little alcohol and the cold water, it just hit him and he just went under and never came back up. And there was another little tributary that came into the river um, just before a bridge. And you could just see how the current could have moved this guy. And you could see where it was eroding underneath the bank. And I was a little worried about walking on the bank because I knew there was water running underneath us. I didn't want us to cave in. But um, sure enough, that's, he was there. Ever do a search and rescue on avalanche? No, I wasn't close enough. When I lived in Montana, I wasn't close enough. We had other people that um, lived like in Yellowstone uh, and worked for uh, um, Yellowstone. So they were right there. So there were a lot more people closer to mountains than I was. Um, the closest I could get would be, I was an hour away, but never had any avalanches there. Um, so. I didn't train my dog. Could he, my other dog do it? Absolutely. I wouldn't think twice about putting him out on, on doing something like that. So you do work with Sheriff uh -huh. Department. They have their canine group. And right. But our dogs are trained a little bit different. Um, and, and they're training their dogs more for drugs because that's where the money is. Um, so they, you know, I think they track, but, and they track adrenaline scent. And to be honest, I don't want to, I don't really want to do bad guys. I don't want to be, you know, those bad guys have weapons. And <laughs> I just, you know, I, I find them, don't find them. You know, I don't, I don't care. I just don't want my dog shot. I don't want me shot. And, you know, that's what, but they, they are more and more getting away from doing that because it's, you know, it's a lot of work and people are, you know, the public has a hard time with, well, the dogs bite. Well, they should bite, you know, these bad guys. If they don't know enough to, to surrender, then you're going to get bit. But no, I don't do that. I don't want to do that. I know, I know people do, but I won't. When and why did you come to Rochester? Um, I hated my job in Montana. 
Um, and yeah, you know, the job situation out there wasn't great, and I really wasn't in the mood to move to another, well, it's not another city in Montana, it was about two and a half hours away, which would have put me away from my group of people that I trained with. And I thought it's not really going to change. I, I just, I just thought I don't. It was time to. I'm from here, so I just decided. And a job. There was two jobs. There was a job in Syracuse and a job here. And I didn't, you know, didn't care. But I got the one here, which was my priority. But I am. I just moved a lot. <laughs> yes. Back to the boat. Yes. What do they do exactly to let you know? Um, what is their movement? Both of my dogs had totally different uh, ways of telling me. Keller, my German Shepherd, was much more vocal, and he would bark. Oh, okay. And that was, you know, then everybody, everybody on the boat, because there were quite a few people when we did the one at Cuca, and they were like, oh, yeah, we get that. We can read him. He's, you know, telling us. And I remember when he finally was disgusted with us, pretty much, he just laid down and did this big sigh like, what more did you want me to do? I mean, it was everybody just laughed. They were like, "Okay, let's just stop here, mark it, and we'll." And I went and got my other dog, which was actually a Belgian Chevron, um, and I, you don't see those very often. She was actually <sighs> kind of a throwaway. I got her as a pup, and um, she had some major problems. And I didn't care. I mean, being a search dog wasn't my priority with her. It was just get her, you know, away from where she was and be my little pet dog. Well, as t things went on, I had to build confidence in her, so I just started doing stuff. I did agility with her. I did search and rescue. I did tracking. I did cadaver. And everything I did with her, she excelled at. So I'm like, all right. So I did. the only thing, I, she tracked great, but she didn't have a real strong confidence. And I always worried that if something happened that scared her, she'd blow out of a search and I may be looking for a little kid or something. I couldn't deal with that. I need a dog that I know has got the confidence no matter what happens, a gun going off, you know, cars, whatever. I didn't need that. So she was just, you know, doing cadaver was, especially out in Montana, was no issue. And then put her on the boat and like, which totally surprised me about her, putting her on the boat and letting her work. But her, her alert was just a hard stare. So you had to really watch her. I mean, I had to keep my hand, you know, eyes on her. We did the canal out in Clyde a few years ago, and I used both of my dogs, and the wind never worked right. I mean, it was always going with the water, and we're not. And after the fact, they found the bodies right where we went in with the boats, and we. And the story was that they probably were dumped after we had done the search. Oh, yeah, 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 because that, I mean, yeah, the dogs, you know, and I never, you know, coming in or coming out where we were docking, it just didn't make sense. And we were on an airboat for that, so they were like really close to the water. And the noise didn't bother them, they're very noisy. I mean, we had to wear ear and headphones for talking because you couldn't talk. Yes? Um, when you don't have, when you finally, find or how do you reward your dogs? Say if you find it looking for a child and you can see the child, you find the child and you know that's the end and you... That's his reward, I mean truly. But how, what, what Normally in training, doing? that's his reward. This oh. is what he gets. Oh, he's toys. Yeah. Oh, no. This is, oh, yes. <laughs> this is what we really like. Yeah, so this is what, um, you know, I'll carry it. Sometimes I give it to the person that's hiding. It doesn't really matter um, what he does. And I'll try and show you in here. I'll see if he'll uh, do it for us, um, is go find the person. And he'll, come, he'll go to the person. He comes back. He hits me, which really rather he barked, but that's what he decided he needed to do. So I went with that. <laughs> and because in Montana, our dogs, like here, they're on a line. They're on their harness, but they're also on a line. In Montana, they worked offline, most of the, unless we were in the city. Um, so they could disappear. I might not see them. So I had to try and make sure I stayed on track with them so they could backtrack to me and get me. My dogs don't work that far away from me. 
So, I mean, I remember falling a couple of times and I couldn't get up right away because I jarred every freaking bone in my body. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's not move right away. Let's see, you know, what I hurt. And inst all of a sudden, here's my dog sitting next to me. I mean, he knew something happened. I don't know how he knew, but this dog knew. He knew these things. I, I never could figure out some of the things he did. It was things that were beyond you know, I had other search, we did a mock search um, that they set up and we did a lot of those. Um, and again, so it's like a real search. There's no, you know, there's no flags or anything to tell me where the people are. And he um, was, it t started out to be a halfway decent day. It was a bus accident, hit a train, and they had the bus and they had the train and they had everything and sirens and ambulances and fire trucks and everything all around. And they had set up different scenarios for like the three or four dogs that came to do be part of this mock search and i wasn't going to my dog was not certified so i was just coming to help with everybody else and they and people in our group was like no 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 bring bring keller i'm like all right told me not to but i'll bring him and they said okay you're you need to go that in that direction because we're missing one child okay so we're walking there's no scent article there's nothing I don't know how he knew, but he turned around, went down this little gully into a ditch, and here's the person. I'm like, okay. Do you think they think more than we think they think? Oh, I. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounded funny. I give, I, like I said, I give my dogs a ton of credit for what they can do. And I think I believe in them. I think, and they know I, you know, trust them. and. You know, I know when they're doing what they're doing is right. They never do some, they never follow a ghost track, which I've seen dogs do in training, not in, in real life. And they absolutely know. They absolutely do. How does Stefan let you know when he's found his target? I'll show you. Come here, Dev. Come on. I, I know it's sleeping time. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you're usually at work now. We get to sleep. Yeah. Okay. So I need. Um, let's see. I know I don't know your name. The lady in the pink, orange shirt. You, you right there. Yes, you. I need you to come up to me. Come here, Devin. I just don't want to see. So. <laughs> and actually, could you? I think there was a clean napkin on the table. Okay. So you're gonna just, just wipe that with your hands a little bit. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm just going to have you just walk back, and you can walk around the table and back to your seat. Okay. Here we go. Don't look. You can't look. Come here. Nope. Don't look, Chidi. Do you want to go find? Okay. This is a shake-off. They're shaking. He knows he's going to do something. Yeah. Just go ahead and sit in your seat. So what they do, they do, and I reward them when they do their shake-offs because they're getting rid of all this other smells and scents and cl basically clearing their head and saying, okay, now I'm going to go to work. Here, Dev. Do you want to go find her? Go find her. Come on, let's go find her. Where'd she go? Go find her. Check, check, check. Yep, not her. Nope. Not me. <laughs> go check. Devin, back to work. Come on. There we go. Back to work. And again, your scent's all around here. And in buildings, it really is a little different. Good shake off. Uh, uh, uh. Back to work. Where is she? Uh. Did you find her? No, come back to me. Where'd she go? And they don't like to do these quick things. They like to go out and, and work for a little while. Where is she? Can you show me where she is? Where is she? Check, check. Can you just take this? There you go, and hide it. Okay. Okay, I don't have it, see? It's gone. Where is she? Can you show me? Check. Okay, we're going to start this again because you're going to do this. Come here. Come here, Deb. Okay, one more time. Let's go. Find her. Find her. Come on, go find. 
Something about you. I know. Come on, check, check. Where is she? Check, check. Okay, that's a negative. He went in, looked, turned, to come back. At, at. <laughs> Mister. That's a positive. That's a positive for him. I didn't mean to step on your foot. <laughs> come on, where is she? Where is she? Come on. Doesn't matter. He do, they don't look at, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, a lot of crazy sense in here. Okay. Come here. Okay, and you can go back to your seat. Now. Hey. All right. I'll find it. I'll find it. Here. Here. Check. Check. Go find. Yes, I have puppies too. Where is she? Where is she? I don't know what the circulation, I mean, circulation in the building. I actually had, no, I, we worked a building one time, and the dog was like going up into, and I'm like, there's nobody up there. Oh. Did you find her? Yes. Did you? Yes. Good boy. Good boy. Very nice. Can I have his toy? Good dog. Good boy. Thank you for the nice scarf. No, just kidding. <laughs> so that's, yeah. I can't, it, like I said, building, I hate building searches because you just don't know, even in like, buildings that aren't being used. We used to use those all the time. Like I said, this lady was hiding underneath the desk. Dog never went, could never go de near the, de the desk, but he kept following scent that was going up into this open like ceiling. And I'm like, she's right there. Didn't matter. Did not matter. The scent was not where she was. It was going up into the ceiling. And he was just adamant about being, being there. Can I figure that out? I don't know. But buildings are really very difficult to do. I mean, when you see police doing like searches for drugs and like even like I've gone in, say, a crime scene and done searches for blood spatter or something, I have to literally go with my dog and say, check, 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 check all along the wall and check up and check down because they, they just, there's so much going on in those rooms and like the, if there's a draft or there's something it's just going to take, unless they are literally right on it, they may not get it. It's just hard to tell. Outside where you don't have, you got a lot of scent going on outside, but I like doing tracks that are, um, you know, a few hours old. There is a 90 minute window that you cannot search because the scent goes away at that night, like within a few minutes of 90 minutes, dogs can't track. You have to wait, either go before, like at about an hour, or two, two hours or so afterwards for whatever reason. But that 90, cent, 90 minute phenomenon, there's no scent. Yes? In, in that story of uh, finding the, the body 120 feet down, maybe I missed something. Yeah. But what actually is the scent the dog can pick up? The, unfortunately, as soon as you die, you start decaying. And those gases and that decay in your body, even though they were at 34 degrees, there was still scent coming up. And they, it's amazing. It is amazing how they, how they do that. How do you get them to know what that scent is? We use, no, no, they do actually have pseudo scent. Um, that you can use, but I will not use that because in a court of law, you may have some issues. Well, how do you know that your dog knows that that's really a dead person or dead remains of something, of a person, not a, of something, and how do you know? 
but if and if you use pseudo scent that smells like because I've I've smelled that before and we I went to a seminar and the cop that was there doing it he actually brought pseudo scent and it smelled like a dead body but for me smelling it I don't know whether it's human or a deer or you know or a rabbit or whatever it is Devin I really don't want you to ruin that um, so we use real stuff placenta is easy to get um, you know people have teeth out they give us their teeth in Montana, you know, the bureaucracy in New York is a whole lot different, or there isn't any really in Montana. So we could get stuff very easily out there. Hospital would call, well, we just cut somebody's foot, toe off or foot off or something. And it's like, I know it sounds gross, but you have to do it. I mean, or, you know, there's not really another way of training your dog to smell that particular scent. And they know the difference between human scent and a deer. I mean, I've walked right, you know, dogs have walked right over basically a deer carcass and ignored it because that is not what they're looking for. So they, they really do know what they're talking about. They're talking about or what they're doing. Yes? How do you get paid? What, we don't get paid. This is totally volunteer. Mm -hmm. Your whole organization? Yeah. Take yeah. donations. Yeah. 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 Um, it's hard because I don't, I mean, I work. <laughs> I have a dog training business, uh, <laughs> so I don't have a lot of free time. So to go out and try and you know go out and get donations or do some kind of fundraising, none of us have the time to do that. So it comes out of our own pockets to do it. We do. We are able to write off what we do, like everything I put in that dog's mouth or toy or whatever um, gets written off, or the miles like today that I drove here and back, which is no big deal, but it adds up. So, Dev, I know. Do you train other people to train dogs? I don't, not normal, no, I, no. But in my classes, actually, I am training the people and not the dog. So I do classes through Penfield Rec, and I do some classes, I do a lot of private trainings. But what I'm basically doing, and when I tell people when they come to my first class, is it's not me training your dog. I'm going to teach you how to train your dog and the correct body language and you know what to expect from your dog and not to expect and you know just if you got if something's going wrong I'll tell you what's going wrong and we need to try and fix that before you know things go much further kind of thing. Anything else? How did you get into this or how did you get trained because you mentioned before about when the dogs need to be tested and certifications in terms of FEMA standards. And right. Like How did you learn I, um, 20, well, almost 15 years ago, I started doing this. And 20 years prior to that, I read an article when I was traveling all the time. Um, Sandy Bryson was a big tra uh, search and rescue, did buildings and that kind of, I don't do, I don't do that kind of uh, searches either. Um, and I read it, and here she is on the front page of Parade with her big German Shepherd. And I'm like, you know what? Someday I'm going to do that. Well, it took me 20 years to get to that point. And I had grown up with dogs, horses. So training came very easy to me. But did I not go? To, I mean, I went to search, or not search dog training, but I went to you know classes for seminars to, on training dogs. And so. Then I moved to Montana and got involved with a group. And basically, you learn from watching everybody else and start training your own dog. And, you know, you just learn, you have to learn a lot about your dog's body language and what they're telling you. I mean, just the way they hold their tail. I know you'll eat that. He does. He eats anything and swallows it. Um, yeah, I hate to tell you what the things. And he's still, I figured at eight years old or almost eight years old, he would stop. It, you know, I figured he'd grow up from you know eating anything that's you know gets dropped on the ground well he hasn't <laughs> have you so um, but anyway so I you know I just kept learning and learning and learning my dog's body language and how they held their tail would, would tell me that you know they're tracking they're working they may go off track and they may still be working but the tail could change the ears are going to change and that's what's nice about having a German Shepherd is because one they have a tail and two they have ears so I can see things and he's not a dog that puts his head real close to the ground he he usually has his head up about this high and if he tracks pavement 
I just have to trust him and trust that he's, you know, moving because his body language is different. Um, car tracking. Uh, my other dog, his nose was pretty close to the ground, and the minute he, that person got in the car, his head would come up. And then he did a lot more weaving because the scent's moving. I mean, we did a two-part news thing with him uh, when I was in Montana showing him. I mean, even a bus had gone by with that diesel smell. And we had to wait for a few minutes for it to just settle. But, I mean, he, and we had to do a take two because the cameraman was watching me, not the dog, when he got to the person in the car. And he goes, well, do you think he'll do it again? I'm like, oh, yeah, he'll do anything because he was a major ham. I mean, he knew. I mean, you could just do anything with him, and he just got it. Devin is a little more picky. It's like, no, I have to do it this way. You know, you just have to get to know your dog and what they do and, you know, what they're telling you. And they do tell you a lot just by their body language. I actually trained the first dog in, Mont uh, in, a, in New York State to be scent specific area, and the guy quit right after I trained his, got his dog certified. So I was a little, little annoyed. <laughs> and I told, you know, basically I felt his dog wasn't operational because he'd only been working with me for a year. And I said, you can't work this dog unless I'm with you because I know what's going on. You know, I knew the dog really well. And it was a nice little lab. Um, and we started tracking with him to get him focused. But I knew, I mean, he's a lab. He wanted to range and work an area. And he was very, and we could bring him back, send him, and send them back out because in New York State you got a lot of people in places where people go missing like their Adirondacks it's possible you're going to run into a few people when you're tracking or looking for somebody now I don't worry about coming on people when I'm tracking because he's looking at and the scent I know somebody had a question how do they know when I mean I could track through a football field and not worry that my dog can't track because when they take that scent that smell from the scent article it's like a picture to them so they remember that picture, that scent. So it doesn't matter that there's a lot of other pe you know, people been around. It doesn't matter. Can you start training a dog when they're like three years old like to do that? Three is the oldest, I would say, would be the thing to do, especially if you've got somebody brand new. Uh, if it's an exceptional dog that looks like they're going to be healthy till they're, say, 10. I mean, my shepherd that I lost, he was almost 12, and he was working. Mm -hmm. I would still put him on a boat. His legs were a little weak, so he was, you know, he was ready so he could do that. But it, three, because it takes so long to train them. You know, by the time you train them, you got a six-year-old dog, and they're just getting past their prime, I mean, six to eight kind of prime. But then you're only going to work them two years or three years, and you lose your dog. So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, one of the police dogs, Ben, Ben and Keller, we worked a couple of times. I backed them up a couple of times, and um, he was a phenomenal dog. He was a dog that you could take out and do whatever. I mean, they were so typical, so similar. Um, only Ben could bite and Keller couldn't. <laughs> um, but they were just so similar, and he lost him at eight with cancer. So, you know, yeah. So, you know. That's an awful lot of work to put in a dog and lose them at eight years old. But it's just, you never know. You know, you just don't. But yeah, starting, you know, a puppy. I started one dog at 18 months. Uh, my little shepherd, I started her that I've had now for not quite two years. Um, at eight months, doing little things. I wasn't pushy with her because she had some things to overcome. But she's turned into like a, just a phenomenal little dog. But he's just, you know, he's he, he was very, very high drive dog. This dog would normally not lay down. I mean, he, and he still has a hard time if he's outside to lay down for like 10 minutes. Never. I mean, he might make it for a couple, and he's up, and I've got to be doing something. But that's just how these dogs were bred. They were bred to work, and, you know, you just have to deal with the... You know, getting them to sleep. As long as they get lots of exercise at night, they were fine. But if they didn't get exercise, you didn't get sleep. And I wasn't some, I didn't crate, and he never was crated at night. He was very good about that. So, anyway. Any other questions? Has Malaysian Airlines called you yet? No. <laughs> yeah, that ocean thing, I don't know. 
that, that's kind of a needle in a haystack kind of thing. Yeah, there, dogs can't work that big. I mean, because you just, you know, and besides, I, again, still, scent would come up no matter how deep they are, but I don't think anybody does any ocean type searches. It's just, unless you're close to shore or something. Then if you had wind that was coming in off the water, you could say, okay, go straight out, start looking, but I just can't tell you how far. You know, I've done that. I've walked the sides of rivers and, and, and lakes, and, that, and they can do that, but I wouldn't think, of, uh, I wouldn't even consider doing, you know, taking the time to do something like that. Okay. You're welcome. Any other questions? You're very welcome. Thank you.